Have you ever witnessed a political campaign in which a female candidate was described as unqualified or too emotional to properly do that job? Or have you read a news article that praises a candidate you already support, confirming your opinions about them? These examples are very common and simplified examples of biases, often hidden by both conscious and subconscious viewpoints. In recent years, the media has shifted from being self-proclaimed fact-finders to a collection of sources who often possess strong political biases and leanings. This shift is not necessarily negative or even really a shift at all. Rather, one could make an argument that it's nearly impossible to report information without some influence of bias. But the question is, to what extent do biases actually impact the media? Well, join me as I take you through the journey of how media bias affects the free press. According to the Statista Research Department in the USA, most people spend an average of over seven and a half hours a day consuming media. This means that the majority of human beings rely on the media to get information, shape their thoughts, understand the world around them, and validate their previously held perspectives. So, the media is seen as a place to consume information for our brains that often crave validation. Walter Lippmann, who was a journalist and media critic, once said, a free press is not a privilege, but an organic necessity in a great society. Without criticism and reliable and intelligent reporting, the government cannot govern, for there is no adequate way in which it can keep itself informed about what the people of the country are thinking and doing and wanting. So, if the free press is an organic necessity in a great society, what happens when the media is contaminated with bias? What happens to the free press when the media is biased? Let us take a look at how media bias affects free press. Firstly, media bias is the selective favoritism and dissemination of information, ideas, or standpoints. The media exhibits such bias through journalists and news producers in their selection and dissemination of stories and events. Everything the media publishes is primarily created through the free press privilege, meaning the privilege given to the media to report any content they believe to be important. This privilege can also be used to spin stories in a certain direction without many checks. For example, when looking at media stations like CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, and CNBC, it might be easy to say that they don't take a neutral side in political references and dissemination of information about government and politics based on media bias ratings found on Biasly.com. According to the Hill-Harris X poll on media bias, 68% of Republicans said CNN has liberal bias, while 54% Democrats said Fox News has a conservative bias. The negative perception of media sources from opposing sides goes much further than this, though. Political psychologists often refer to this phenomenon as the hostile media effect. This is the notion that a person tends to believe that a media source from across the aisle is more likely to report stories with bias against the person's beliefs, even when stories from both sides are reported the exact same. People are inclined to believe that the opposing side is biased against them. This only furthers bias in media. The effect of such media bias has created a diluted truth in the free press and has caused a huge restriction on the fundamental right and principle of communication and expression. Beyond the impacts of selection biases and informational biases that permeate the mainstream media, there is also the issue of where media sources receive their funding, often pandering to a specific group. For example, Fox News was created by Rupert Murdoch. Murdoch hired a former Republican media consultant to be the CEO of the company. How neutral will Murdoch be when instructing the journalists under him? How will the free press be practiced by journalists without doing so to cater to the Republican Party? How will a journalist speak of vices and indecency they might unearth in the Republican Party if the journalist is under a restriction that will threaten their financial status, employment, and even career? Well, the truth is, whether it is Murdoch or someone else, whoever is in charge will have some bias. We all have personal stances and preferred leanings in how our government should be run. It is how we foster and channel our individual biases that truly matters. Biases in news sources have caused the values of free press to be forgotten and has allowed totalitarian countries to see the West as a dangerous weapon. In Russia in 2018, the government made steps to restrict access to Telegram due to Telegram's management disagreeing with Russia's demand for the encryption keys to people's chats. In China, the government continues to increase pressure on private technology to shut down uncensored information. In North Korea, 
perhaps the most extreme of the totalitarian regimes, citizens don't have access to free press, independent thought, or even the outside world. Though the United States media is far ahead in its freedoms when compared to these other countries, one may begin to wonder how free the press truly is when it is largely controlled by powerful people who decide what to report on and how to report it. Media bias over the past two decades has done more harm than good to the free press. The hope is that these damages won't become an uncontrollable media pandemic.